So it's a yucky, dreary day on the homestead. And Jason's inside editing videos. So I thought I would make some homemade chocolate syrup. So I am going to take you guys inside with me and show you how I do it. So these are all of the ingredients I'm gonna need. So let's get started. So in the pot, I've put one and one half cups of water, three cups of sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And now I'm going to bring this to a boil. I added one and a half cups of the baking cocoa, one tablespoon of vanilla. The recipe calls for two tablespoons of the caro syrup. I thought it was kind of thick, so I'm trying to do it with a little less syrup because the syrup is the thickening agent, and I'm going to see how it goes. Now I'm going to bring it back to a boil, and I'm going to simmer it for 10 minutes. So while it was simmering for the 10 minutes, it did stir it constantly. Now I have to let it cool off before I put it into the mason jars. So that recipe makes a little shy of two jars. I am going to keep mine in the refrigerator. Once I find the right consistency, I will probably at least make a double batch. So I have some on the shelf, but for right now I'm just going to Keep them in the fridge, use them for ice cream, chocolate milk. Tastes much better than any Hershey syrup I've ever had. And I know exactly what's in it. Hey folks, hey welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's Jason with Hamblechair Ranch and today's video is going to be a little different than most. Uh, I thought uh, it might be kind of fun to take you folks along on a little journey with me as we edit some videos. When we began this journey several years ago, uh, the original intent for filming was really just to share on uh, uh, places like Facebook and on YouTube, but primarily for the kids and some of our friends back home. Now we never really envisioned us having this blossom into a full blown off grid homesteading YouTube channel until a little bit later down the process when we realized that number one, we enjoyed doing it. And number two, people were very interested in what we were doing. We were just starting out. Uh, and at the time we were still living in Chicago uh, with our normal lives, raising our kids. And we hadn't made that transition yet. Now in the beginning, uh, if you go back and look at some of the earlier videos we did, a lot of that stuff was used on photo software that Jen uh, uh, was pretty familiar with doing uh, her her photography stuff um, but you know like anything else you know as we continue to progress we wanted to get uh, some more tools to help us improve the way that we were doing our videos and that led us to video studio 
So Video Studio is video editing software. It is the software that we use and we've been using it for quite some time now. So in the beginning, Jen used to do all of our video editing. Uh, I would do all the video taking and then she would compile it all and build our videos. However, uh, over time, uh, it just became pretty apparent that uh, it would probably be better if I did it simply because I was doing the videos at the time and kind of had the storyline in my head. So that's how I kind of, that's how I got, you know, um, involved with doing all of our editing. Now that said, once I finish a video, you know, we have to send it to the quality department to make sure everything, the sound is right, the video is right, the transitions are right. And that's where Jen comes in. So before we publish a video, Jen and I will sit down and we'll, completely watch the video, we'll talk about it, uh, the pros, the cons, uh, we'll make any changes, uh, and once we both have our stamp of approval on it, that's when we'll upload it. Now getting back to Video Studio, uh, the software itself, uh, that is what I've got on my screen right now, and we'll kind of walk through, I'll kind of walk through uh, the steps in which I take uh, to do this. At this point, let me just say that this video is not for video editing pros. Um, I mean, if you're a pro at this and this is something you, you do, you're probably not going to gain much out of this. Uh, but if you're like uh, Jen and I, who are just starting out and we, have, we didn't have any idea of, of how to get started, really, uh, that's what this video is more about. Because honestly, that's kind of where I feel our level is at. Uh, it, and there's so much more that we can do with our videos but it's a learning process and we are still in that learning process. So the other thing I'm gonna mention is that uh, I'm not gonna to talk too much about the capabilities of Video Studio. There are a ton of videos on YouTube where you can go and you can spend the amount of time that you need on different sections of, of, of the software um, so that you can learn how to do certain capabilities or certain things um, within the software. Uh, what I wanna to talk to you guys about is really our process and how we get to a, a finished product. So obviously the first thing you have to do is really take the videos. Um, very similar to what I'm doing right now. I've got my camera in, in front of me uh, and we're just taking raw footage. Uh, now this, this shot that you're seeing right now has been ongoing. So even though my scenes are you know, showing from this direction and then maybe from this direction, it's all still the same video. So when I look at my camera right now, I'm showing, I'm rolling for five minutes and 50, 51, 52, 53. Uh, really all we're doing is as I'm going through these things, uh, I'll pause, move the camera and then finish and, and, and or keep going. Um, that is just one way that I collect video. Uh, we don't have a whole bunch of different cameras we do have our two cell phones and we do have a GoPro, uh, but it is difficult to manage, you know, going, you know, from, from, from video camera to video camera, uh, constantly, you know, during a build or during a, a video shoot that we're doing. And that brings up another point is that, uh, in, in a lot of cases, sometimes our videos may not seem complete, especially on a build uh, video. And the reason for that is simply because we have things to do. You know, we, we've got to get this stuff done and, uh, you know, taking video and changing the cameras, all of that stuff takes time. And we try to capture all of the high points. And in a lot of cases, we'll just let a camera roll. We'll do what we're doing. And then, you know, during the editing process, we're able to cut out all the uh, all the uh, uh, stuff that doesn't really matter or isn't going to make it to the final cut. Um, and so, you know, and, and there are times that we'll have, you know, an hour or two of video that we cut down to, you know, 10 or 15 minutes because a lot of that stuff is just inconsequential. It just doesn't really matter. A prime example of that is the video we're working on today, which is entitled the Amish cabin kitchen shelves. Now this video we've already released. And so if you're watching this. Uh, you'll have to go back and, and watch, you know, that video because that is the one that we're editing today in this video. 
Okay, so now, so now let's talk about our process. Uh, it is no surprise that uh, our videos um, are about a week or two behind where we are live. Uh, and what I mean by that is we will take a ton of footage, you know, uh, and we will dump it onto the computer and then we will go back and sort that when we start to, to edit. Because editing does take so long uh, for us, uh, we do try to edit a few times a week, which in turn gives us, you know, one video every three or four days. Uh, that's comfortable for us. That works for us. I know there's some content creators out there uh, who can drop a video a day uh, by reducing the amount of editing or by, you know, whatever, however they're doing it. Uh, that's just simply not us and it's not something we can do and it's not something we're going to strive to do anytime soon. But the first thing I would like to show you is how we structure our, our storage on the laptop uh, for our videos. So I've kind of created a, a small um, uh, a sandbox, if you will, uh, so we can kind of walk through it and I'll show you what we're doing. So what you're looking at here is a YouTube tutorial folder that I created that looks very much like the folder that we actually use. Now in this folder, we have three additional folders. We have a filler videos folder, we have an in process folder, and we have a published folder. So for the, the sake of this conversation, we're gonna go into the in process folder. Now once we're in the in process folder, we have uh, a, a main folder called running video log. And in this folder here is where we dump all of our videos. This would be everything from uh, uh, our, our, our cell phones and our GoPro. Would all get dumped into here. Now, there could be many, many days worth of video in here. And if you look here, we've got 2-21-23, so February 21st. We have March 18th, March 19th. Um, we've got some more February. If you look at the, type, the names of the files, we have 8,000s. We got 2200s or 2000s here, and that's because uh, some of these files were taken from my phone, some of these files were taken from Jen's phone. Uh, I don't know if I put any GoPro in here, but uh, if there were, it would have its own file name. So the question then becomes, well, how do we keep it all in chronological order so that we can create our videos? Well, I simply go to the date, click on the date, and put them in a chronological order, and that way, if you look here, everything is by date and time. So now we have a video from Jen, then we have the next video would have been mine, and so forth and so on all the way down the line. Now to create a full or to create a video, what we would then do is say we would take a block chunk of dates. So in this case, we'll grab from like 219 in February all the way down to 221 in February. We would take these videos, we'll cut them, we go back to our in-process folder. We create a folder, and in this case, we're gonna call this folder Video A, and we dump all those videos in there. So now what we've done is I have a folder called Video A, and it has all of the videos from this time frame. These videos here, these are the videos that we are going to use to create whatever this video is going to be. If we need to, when we get ready to create the next video, we come in here and say, okay, we're going to take all of March 18th and March 19th. So we pull all of these videos out, we cut those, we create a new folder, and we're going to call this one Video B or whatever that title is. Once we have that folder opened, we paste our videos in there. And now keep in mind, these are all in chronological order. So I know exactly what video comes, you know, which one to start with and so forth and so on. The reason we do it this way is because it allows us to separate our videos out from our main uh, source of video. Uh, and again, this is where all of our videos go. However, let's say we make a video 
that is very specific to a certain topic. We already know what videos those are. And so we're going to create a dedicated video folder and then dump all of those uh, files into that folder. So now I have my beginning and the end and whatever the case was uh, or whatever I was doing at that you know particular time or whatever that topic was, all of those videos are in this folder. By doing it this way, it just allows us to manage our, our videos because we do take a lot of them. Now we also have our published folder and our published folder is basically uh, after we've created a video uh, and we have published it to YouTube, let's say we've created this one, we just cut that folder, go to our published folder, and we throw it in there. Again, this simply allows us to keep track of all of the videos, all of the raw footage, and then all of the, the finished published videos. Now filler videos. Filler videos tend to be those videos where uh, we take our scenery photos or fo you know video of the dogs or of the cat or uh, just random uh, uh, video that we take around the homestead. This is where we put all of those files and we put those here simply so that uh, we have some place that we can pull these files from when we need them to uh, uh, fill in a, a video. So now that we have uh, organized all of our raw footage, we have everything in our folders, now we're ready to actually do the editing. Now there's a few things to know about the editing, at least how we do our editing. Number one is we do use Video Studio, and number two, our music comes from Upbeat. Now there is a link in the description below if you'd like to uh, take a look at Upbeat. Uh, it is the type of, it is the software that we use for all of our music. Uh, and it was extremely affordable, great for, you know, uh, 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 YouTubers that are or creators that are starting out uh, and looking for some, some, you know, relatively good music uh, for their videos. Uh, it's what we've been using for quite some time. And at this point, we have no, uh, um, we've had no issues with Upbeat. Okay, so let's make a video. I'm already five minutes into this video. Uh, and basically what I'm doing is constructing uh, the video itself. So I'm going to go ahead and continue doing this and uh, I'll let you folks just come along and, and watch as I do it. Now I do wear headphones uh, so I can listen to the different music, to the different audio. Uh, it just allows me to uh, get a better, uh, 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 get a more accurate, you know, you know, feeling of what it sounds like. All right, here we go. Okay, so now that we have finished all of the editing and I have gotten this video to what I think is ready to be published, and the kitty attacks me. Whew. All right, kitty. Uh, 
That is actually, that actually happens. This isn't a fluke. Sue is a menace. So. He's mad because you kicked him off the chair. He is mad. Yeah. I did kick him off the chair, you little jerk. And he's going back over to the tripod. Wonderful. <laughs> All right, so now that the video is about as done as I can make it, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this video is ready to get uploaded. However, we've got to have QA give it a once over. And, uh, you know, the whole purpose of this is for her to actually see the video because up until this point, she has not seen it yet. And uh, he won't let me see him. No. Well, I don't want to give it away. I like to surprise you with what I've done, you know? I mean, it's kind of cool, you know, to get these done and then surprise you with them. Yeah. So, but uh, you know, we'll go through this, we'll watch it, and uh, there are some things that we'll need to fix. We'll fine sure. tuning. A little fine tuning, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, ready to get started? Ready. All right. So once Jen and I finish our review, uh, everything checks out good, we make any changes that we need to make, uh, then it's time to upload them. Now, sometimes uh, we will simply record our you know, stuff that we're doing every day, and at the end of the day, we dump them into the in-process folder. We don't always uh, edit every day, and there are some days where we don't do anything and don't do any filming. Uh, there are other days where we get a lot of filming done, but it's not necessarily, there's not enough content in that day to have a video for that specific, whatever that thing is that we're doing. And so that's why we have this running video log. And it's also why uh, if you have been following our channel, uh, you'll know that I got a new phone. And there was about a week there where I was doing a lot of videoing, uh, and unfortunately, uh, because the, of the new case that was on that phone, the sound that was that was being recorded was just absolutely terrible. Uh, and for that, I truly apologize. I never went back and checked any of my videos. I never had to check them, and it just didn't. It wasn't something that I was thinking of. So at any rate, so all of that video got dumped into that folder. Now, when I went back to start making videos. Uh, I found out that the uh, the sound was bad uh, and so that's why if you looked at you know I think there's maybe four or five videos uh, in March where I had to you know I felt an obligation to start the video off with apologizing to you folks because the sound was so bad well I hope this helps shed some light on how we produce uh, uh, our videos Right, wrong, or indifferent, it's how we do it and, and it's how we're comfortable doing it. At the end of the day, as long as you folks are enjoying the content that we're putting out, we're going to continue to do so. And if you are YouTubers or you are making content, albeit on YouTube or any other site, and you've got some tips or tricks uh, that I could possibly use, please feel free to drop them below. All right, well, with that, I appreciate you folks sticking around watching this video. Uh, if you haven't done so, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you folks on the next video.